Uh, I would like to introduce um, Tanesh, um, who is from uh, cyberminds.org, and he's going to share um, some of the barriers and some of the enablers of our optimal uh, mental well-being in the cyber world. Uh, please welcome Tanesh. Hello. Just to check, is that the uh, little clicker thing? Yeah. yeah, all right. Um, first off, I'd just like to say thank you, everybody, for making this session, especially before lunch. Um, and also, I'd like to shout out to Crescon and the team for giving us this space today to be able to talk about CyberMinds and the cause and what we're looking to achieve and what we're doing. I've seen some friendly faces in the audience, so it's always nice to see some, some regular faces and then also some new faces, so nice to meet a lot of you. My name is uh, Tanesh, and I am the EVP for Strategy and Partnerships here in the UK. So, um, before we continue, I just wanted to read out our mission statement, um, which has come out in a funny text, but hey-ho. It's called, and this is from our founder and executive chairman, Peter. Uh, we're an Australian-based uh, community. Our mission is to alleviate the suffering of cyber teams and by extension to improve organizational and societal resilience. So before I talk about what CyberMinds is and how I'm connected to it, I just wanted to give you a little bit of backdrop about me. Um, unlike a lot of you folk in the room today, I'm not a practitioner, I'm actually a founder. Um, the first 15 years of my career in cyber, I built, uh, I used to work for Fujitsu, Wipro, some pretty big companies running uh, cybersecurity teams, but not at the sharp end of town, more in program management, business development, sales, marketing, all of that jazz. And then the last 10 years, um, I decided, well, I got made redundant, and I decided to become a founder. And I set up a couple of cybersecurity companies, a, a tech, tech firm, which I'm exiting at the moment, and a consulting firm, and a whole bunch in the middle. And then to add to that, I moved to Australia with my family a couple of years ago, and the time zone killed me. I wasn't raising enough investment. I had to let staff go. And as you can imagine, it all kind of came to a head, um, and I suffered from massive amounts of stress, had an unrelationship, uh, unhealthy relationship with alcohol, and then also, to add to that, um, I, I, I was a bit of a dick dad at home, and I had a fractious relationship at home. And it all really, by August last year, kind of burnt me out. I was done. I, I, I wanted to walk away from all of it. Um, now, I'm not a practicing Hindu man, but if I was, I called up to the, um, one of the 800 Hindu gods back then, and they came through, and they introduced me to this wonderful man, our founder, Peter, who was in Australia. I was in Australia at the time. And he introduced me to CyberMinds. He said, hey, look, this thing, we're building this thing. We're, we're, we want to help, def help our defenders in the industry with, with mental well-being and build organizational resilience. But when we do that, I need some help in the UK. And I said, funny enough, I'm actually moving back to the UK. Let's see where we can go. And here we are eight months on. Oh, certainly I'm here eight months at home, back home into London. And we're driving this message uh, into CyberMinds. So what is CyberMinds? Well, CyberMinds was created in, uh, it was established in 2022 by Peter. We are a purpose-driven initiative and we're a not-for-profit and we're looking to build organizational resilience as well as um, helping our defenders, which is probably most of you, I'm, I'm gonna go with the assumption that you're all defenders here at different levels of job roles as well, um, into building strong mental well-being and looking after our health overall. Our focus is on the cybersecurity sector at the moment. However, that said, we have had a lot of people from outside of cyber saying, what you're doing is pretty cool. Can we bring it into different industries? And actually, can we bring it into young, for, young folk and young learners as well, which we're, we're exploring at the moment. We're peer-informed. What that means is a lot of people in the organization, within CyberMinds and our community, are not just from the practitioner end of town. They're also people like me. They're, there's a whole mix of people. So, but we all come from the industry, and we all know what the challenges are that we face today. So what are the challenges that we're facing in the industry? Well, you'll know some of these, right? There's a, media's given us a bit of a hard time over the last four or five years. You know, when an attack or a breach happens, it's generally the cyber teams who get blamed. The reality is that is changing slowly. It's, uh, in Australia, where the, the organization where Simon Minds is based, we're seeing a lot more of a change with the media and they're accepting the fact that our teams, our defenders, are not to blame. Actually, they're up against it like all of us and we should be allowing for you know, them to have some space because it, it is intense. As a result, there's a massive amount of high stress. I don't know if any of you, and hopefully none of you have been in a, in a breach situation. Um, it is extremely stressful. Um, it's extremely time sensitive, and the burnout rates are high. 
Now, we call out short CISO tenures here. However, uh, and the average in the UK is 26 month, but months, but what we're also seeing is a whole bunch of different job roles that are coming into the industry and then leaving very, very quickly as well um, because of burnout and stress and trauma and all the rest of it. So what's the issue? What's the problem here? Well, we all know that systems break and data and technology lets us down, and that's, this can lead to major, major incidents, and we all know this. It's all, this is, you know, uh, it, it, uh, an, an incident leads to churn naturally, it will do, because, you know, when somebody leaves in your team, the pressure's on you then, and then, of course, in long term, that could, that could have an impact on you yourself. We also know that we need to have a nurturing environment to build strong teams and build uh, for, in order for us to thrive, because if we don't, it's, you know, we're going to see resilience breaking down and, of course, talent retention is a problem in the UK or everywhere, to be fair. So what do we have? We have a duty of care. We are almost, and I love this because we've heard this at so many um, events, we are the unsung heroes. I still believe we are. Um, and, and, you know, we're there to try and protect our organisations and, and we know it's very, very difficult. There is a constant um, fight or flight um, uh, situation we have when there's, when there's a breach, and this can take a, an impact on us. There is, there's a whole load of neurobiology and research that we do this with, with, um, within cyber minds, but for simplicity, let's just say it breaks down into a physical and mental health, and these are the challenges that we are seeing today. So, of course, we've got to protect our digital assets, that's a given, um, but these, beyond the sort of assets, we've got brand reputation as an organisation, we've got liability, we've got staff leaving, we've got all of that that happens when we have a breach. There's already a skill shortage in the planet. Um, very, very, very smart and young and old and everybody, really, anybody who's faced uh, a breach is um, currently, you know, they, they leave the industry due to burnout. And, of course, we all know this. Finding uh, replacements is expensive and challenging. So what is the solution we hear? You know, what, what, do we, what, what are we doing about this? So, like I said, uh, CyberMinds in 2022, launched by Peter, we decided to come out in the market and do something about this. And before I go into the actual underlying uh, protocol and the practices that we help uh, defenders with, I'll just give a little bit about where we are today. Um, over the last 12 months, we've ran some pilot programs with CyberMinds and the protocol, over 180 professionals, um, at, mainly based in the UK, and we've yielded some very, very positive results. This, these protocols that we've ran, we've ran them with universities, we've ran them with a government agency and a big bank in, in, in Australia. Um, and what we found is that pre and post training evaluations yielded up to about a 27% decrease in stress with just eight sessions of going through the CyberMinds protocol. So what is this resilience training? Um, well, the programs are really targeted for our industry at the moment, they're very flexible, but participants who have been mentored, or mentored rather, um, with us, we have found that we are able to help with burnout drivers, and I'll talk about burnout drivers in a minute, and help neutralize them. These sessions that CyberMinds provide, um, they provide both, well, three things, deep cognitive, emotional, and psychological restoration. And at the end, please don't ask me questions about some of that. We'll need our clinical psychologist, but I can pass you over. All right, so what is burnout? This is actually one of my favorite slides because I didn't really realize this applied to me uh, until I actually saw it and I met CyberMinds. For us and our clinical psychologist, who, who, Dr. Dr. Miller, who's, who's the founder, one of the founders who came up with this um, um, diagram here, it's a combination of three things. Number one, um, exhaustion, emotional exhaustion. We've all felt a little bit overwhelmed. Uh, I can't keep doing this. Now, whether you do this in your personal life or whether you're doing this in work or whatever function you have, um, but in, for cyber specifically, we've all had days when we said, we just can't keep doing this. We can't do it anymore. I'm drained. I've got nothing left to give. That's called emotional exhaustion. Then we've got cynicism. This is when we're just feeling unmotivated, which just can't be bothered today. Um, what's the point? Nothing's going to change. The hackers are going to keep on doing what we're doing. And, uh, you know, we've got no money, we've got no budget, and it's just, it's all the same. And then finally, feeling unappreciated. I'm pretty certain most people in this room, and all of us at some point in our, in our, in our careers have felt a little bit like an imposter. I know I certainly felt like an imposter a lot of the time when, uh, when I was building my tech companies. Um, I... I it, I'm just not good enough at the job. I'm not good at my job. I feel unappreciated. My, you know, everybody's just, it's just doom and gloom. You put all of these together, and it's, in, it's called inefficacy, actually. <laughs> you get burnout. So, did I just skip one? No, I okay, fine. So, what we decided to do is we decided to run a pilot, well, the pilot we ran, we decided to run a study, a sample study, um, which is an active study. It's currently in, in Australia. We are, we are now running the same study in, um, 
um, the USA and then also in UK, which we're looking to do. We are looking for participants to help identify some of those burnout drivers and then essentially uh, what, uh, what, what that means uh, out of the study and what it means for all of us. So last year we, we had uh, 211 participants uh, and you can see the, the, the sort of demographics here. Gender, there is a high proportion of males in that. It is sad reality, sad reality of the industry we live in. We are trying to find balance in that as we all are. Um, however, what we also found is, and in the mix of the participants who were involved in this research, is that we did a good cross-section of job roles. So not just, I mean, a high proportion is CIOs and uh, CISOs, but we did have a lot of security engineers, security consultants, analysts, other and investigators who all came in to talk about what those burnout drivers were. And this is what we found. Emotional exhaustion, as we just talked about, it cuts across every single one of those job roles, um, you know, from the sort of CIO, CT, CISO level, all the way through to um, consultants and engineering investigators. It, it's just everyone's feeling a little bit tired and a little bit unappreciated. One thing which we haven't found yet, and we don't know why this is, and of course, at some point, we'd love to be able to open up this survey to people to find out why, in, when it comes to gender and females, there's a slightly higher number of people feeling um, emotionally exhausted uh, in, that, in those two particular roles, security engineers and consultants. So we'd obviously love for you to be participants and help us address and understand that a little bit further. Low efficacy. So this is the feeling of, you know, I'm feeling just unappreciated, just not cut out for this work. What we found is when there's low efficacy in us within the organization, um, that generally people want to leave. They feel like they want to leave and there's an intention to leave. And again, that's not great for our industry. As we can see here, this is the efficacy scale. Before I go and talk about the percentages, we needed to have some kind of average for our, uh, for our defenders. So what we did, we looked at the average score for front healthcare, frontline healthcare workers, which is arguably probably the hardest uh, role to be in after COVID and all of that stuff. And sadly, 84% of the cybersecurity professionals that we sampled fell well below this range. So we are right up there uh, with, with, with this dotted line and, and frontline healthcare workers with the way we're feeling. This is going to be no surprise to most people in the room. Seat quality is pretty poor. Um, this population distribution bell curve is for an Australian uh, population. Uh, that's the average adult there, and we are two and a half times lower than that for our sleep deprivation. 46% of cybersecurity professionals today feel that and rate their sleep quality is fairly bad or very bad. When you're in a trauma situation, um, and, and, and I've had my own company ransomware attacked, and it was the most horrible thing ever, you do not sleep. You are in fight or flight mode. You are constantly thinking about it. You're thinking about your team. You're thinking about the organization. You're thinking, am I the one that was to blame? Was it because of me and my efforts in the company that you know th these bad guys have got in? So it, I think this is a pretty obvious one. Generally, we just don't sleep well. OK. so. What is iRest? Now I'd like to introduce you to where CyberMinds and where we came to our core programs. The program that we run is run by a clinical psychologist, quite a famous one, uh, called Dr. Miller. Um, and he is a, an American. And he runs this program. He devised this program, this protocol. And it's currently endorsed by the US military. And it's attention training techniques. And we'll go into a little bit of that in a minute. It's actually used to treat veterans that are coming out of the military, who are coming out of volatile situations, war zones, who have got you know, post-PTSD post, uh, um, and, and in a really, really bad place. And Dr. Miller deployed this, uh, this, practice, uh, this protocol, and effectively, they're using it today in the US. There's several stages to this protocol, all the way from sort of physical relaxation right through to uh, the deeper, you know, I love this bit, the deeper exploration of unresolved emotions and beliefs, because we all have them. Um, and ultimately, what we're trying to do here is restore an unbreakable well-being. And of course, over time, uh, with enough practice, we want to rewire the brain to a better place. So CyberMinds and Peter was introduced to um, Dr. Miller. And we've adapted this powerful protocol to meet the needs of our security professionals. And it's designed with four targeted programs. I'm going to go into the programs right now, but I'm going to go in very high, high level, because I, I, I imagine there's a lot to take in here. And of course, if you'd like some more information, please just 
Come and find me and we'll talk about it. We do have a stand here. So the first program is more of a group program. This is a, 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 a protocol which is kind of delivered over a period of 12 months. It's a slower time, slower paced program for, your, for yourself, as a, for your, com uh, for your um, teams and, and for, um, to kind of help cultivate positive habits in a slower time and slower pace with regular practice and, and some of the protocol training. Then we've got rapid reset. Now, this is a lot more intense. This is when you're in breach situation. This is when it's all, you know, shit's hitting the fan. It, it, you know, there's, a, there's, there's a, a ransomware attack and we need somebody to come in uh, and really just take that individual out of that moment, go through the protocol and then get them to reset and bring them back to where they are today, which is, it's okay, it'll all be okay. And so this is a four week pro uh, protocol. Basecamp is really our prerequisite to all of the formal training. It's a 60 to, 30, 60 to 90 minute uh, self-paced um, course, which essentially gives all of us um, the theoretical foundations of uh, what's about to come and, and, some of the, and some of the courses ahead. And then finally, CISO support. This comprehensive support is designed for security leaders um, and it addresses high stress situation environments of professionals and we've got some CISOs going through this at the moment. It's based on something called the dyad approach and that was devised by Dr. Miller and, and there's a lot of information about how that works one-to-one -one with people. So what do we do? What's the indicative program themes with everybody here? Well, one thing you'll get from all of this is we want to teach people about switch off strategies. Interesting thing is some of this stuff, whilst I'm not a practitioner, I, I, I deploy it myself today and it, it's, we all need to switch off, but that's a good one for me. That's one of my favorites. Managing overwhelm, um, regaining control and connection when we are in that fight and flight mode, building resilience against some of these threats, mentally, certainly, transforming fear of failure, bringing some confidence back in our job, bringing some confidence back in ourselves. Supporting your team effectively if you have got a team, and then of course, seam seamless integration. So I'm going to whiz through some of these, but these are some, some of the, the marked improvements we saw in percentages with asking some of our participants at the beginning of the sessions and then at the week one, and then of course at week eight after the sessions. And I won't go through all of them, but there's some, some questions we used to ask, we ask, and then these are the kind of improvements we see after the, going through the CyberMinds protocol. So how often have you been upset because of something that's happened unexpectedly? 17.5% um, 17 17 improvement. Um, how often have you found that you could not cope against things that you had to do? A 30% marked improvement. In the last month, how often have you felt that you are not on top of things, which is often the case in our, in our industry and when we're defending, we saw a 30, almost a 35% marked improvement. And then one of my favorite ones here, because it's a significant improvement, is in the last month, how often have you felt difficulties um, when things were piling up so high you could just simply could not overcome them? And we saw a 50, almost a 51% marked improvement after our sessions. Okay, so I'd be glad to know we're getting to the end. Uh, but I would love for all of you to get involved in some shape, form, or fat, um, some way, and there's multiple ways that you can do this. Um, Sign up for the resilience training for yourself, for your team. Um, base camp, you know, we, we would love to give that to you as a gift. And of course, go through it and, and, and you can see what we're all about. Mention CyberMinds. Social media is massive isn't, at the moment, as you know. Spread the network, spread the word. Um, we, could, we could do some growth initiatives together. I am the head of partnership, so I can help with some of that. If you are a speaker, if you've had some experience yourself, you want to share your story, get in touch. We're looking for speakers. We want people to share their journeys. Um, we, we do run these very intimate sessions with CISOs and it's amazing how much vulnerability there is there and how you know, some of these senior leaders who are perceived one way but in this closed environment will very much talk about the challenges they face in their job, in their company, in their teams and it all comes down to vulnerability. So talk to us. You don't have to be a CISO, by the way. You could be uh, you know, a defender. Uh, we would love to share your story uh, around the world. Become an ambassador or volunteer. That's easy. We've got a program and you can help volunteer if you want to. Uh, provide support. So once again, thank you, uh, Crescon, for giving us the opportunity to be able to talk about this. We've got a booth today. Um, I'm there all by myself. Um, and we can talk about what we do and we'd love to share that with you. Collaborate with joint initiatives. This is a little bit more involved. So we do work with organizations where we're looking for funding for research papers um, and try and get more participants in there to try and expand on the research we do. And then of course, deliver that back to, to, to everybody in this room. And then finally, the baseline study, which I talked about. Here is a QR code, uh, which we would 
love if you could to be part of that baseline study. Um, get involved because the more we can get involved, the more information we can um, um, provide and which will help us in the long term around understanding this thing called mental well-being and mental health. Cool. Thank you.